The Prince and Princess of Wales send a message of support to Olympians while Harry and Meghan get ready for Columbia. Plus, why Queen Camilla didn't want King Charles to disclose his cancer diagnosis. And Susan Kelly from What Kate Wore breaks down the hottest royal summer fashion moments and how the royal children's style has evolved. They're growing up right in front of us. And while I think Kate will always stick to a lot of the British high street brands and heritage brands, I think we'll see them continue to expand that selection a little bit. We got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hey everyone, I'm Christina and that's Christine and welcome to Royally Us. And we have our Prince William Scruffy sighting. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely the highlight of the week is this uh, video message we'll get to in a minute, but lots of diverse royal stories this week for us to get into. Yes, totally. And like you said, Princess Kate sent a message of support to athletes alongside her husband, Prince William, um, thanking the athletes of Great Britain for their showing at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Take a look. Greetings, loved ones. From all of us watching at home, congratulations to Team GB. Well done on all you've achieved. You've been an inspiration to us all. Love this video. Also features Snoop Dogg, who we said last week has won the Olympics, and David Beckham. But yeah, we love seeing a scruffy vacation mode Prince William. You know, we haven't seen Prince William with a beard since 2008 when he had um, when he had was able to grow in his facial hair as part of a military exercise. But apparently Queen Elizabeth II felt that clean shaven faces were sort of the most royal. And so we haven't seen him with scruff ever since. So this is very like downtime vacation mode, William. I absolutely love it. Like social media went crazy over Prince William with a beard. But you can tell <sighs> Kate's in a t-shirt, William's. Uh, you know, got his 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 sports shirt and his facial hair. This is very like a down to earth video taken in their garden at home. Very relaxed, but so so nice to see them. Love it, and we love to see a sighting of them because you know they're on vacation. August months are quiet, so it's yeah. nice to see them and a little return to normalcy. So love to see that. Well, we're going to be seeing a lot of Harry and Meghan this week because they will begin their four day tour of Columbia. They will visit the capital city, go to um, a colonial cities, attend a cultural festival. They were invited by the vice president, and he said it in a statement that they will have the exceptional opportunity to engage with elders, youth, and women who embody the aspirations and voices of Colombians and illuminate Colombia's role as a beacon of culture and innovation. So this kind of feels like they're not, obviously they're not royals anymore, but this does have a feel of a royal tour. Yeah, absolutely. And they've had several visits like this that feel like a royal tour, but mm -hmm. obviously aren't royal tours. And it's a part of their role um, as sort of ambassadors for Archwell. Uh, this is part of a larger conference for children and their health and mental well-being and online safety plays into it as well. So all of this sort of this um, larger conference really fits in with Archwell's work. And I think and that is why they're visiting sort of to, to promote these projects um, with Archwell to meet people, to make these connections. And this is a normal thing to do for uh, um, celebrities, ambassadors, uh, large, you know, um, key figures in large corporations and charities. But because it's Harry and Meghan, it really just feels has that royal tour feel to it. Whereas these other if it was anyone else, their visit probably wouldn't get the amount of press that Harry and Meghan's visit is going is going to because it feels like a royal tour. Yeah, definitely. And it's interesting because Harry will not be attending the funeral of his uncle, Robert Fellows, due to security reasons. Yet he and, you know, Meghan are traveling to Columbia, and that seems to be okay. As we know, Fellows, who's the uncle of Harry and Prince William and brother-in-law to their late mother, Princess Diana, he died on July 29th of undisclosed causes at the age of 82. Uh, he was married to Diana's sister, Lady Jane, and also worked for Harry's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, um, before moving on to the roles of Deputy Private Secretary and Private Secretary. So, yeah, it is interesting that he won't go back to the UK because of security reasons, but it is okay to travel to Colombia with his wife. Yeah, I mean, they've traveled to so many different countries, mm -hmm. so many different diverse cultures yeah. and places, places that are sort of on, you know, um, advisory lists for travel mm -hmm. like this trip to Colombia although this places that they're visiting are not on those advisory lists it does raise a few eyebrows that the UK is still a firm no-go for them mm -hmm. but whatever helps them feel safest and sleep at night and feel like they're protecting their family that's just what they have to do yeah no at the end of the, at the end of the day that is what's most important all right well let's yeah. spill the royal tea and queen camilla had initially been against king charles decision to publicly share updates regarding his health 
Charles revealed back in January that he was set to undergo treatment for an enlarged prostate, and Camilla did not want him disclosing his condition. This is according to uh, Robert Jobson. He told the UK's The Independent in an interview published last week. So he explained the king overruled her. He felt it was a chance to take a lead and in doing so to encourage men experiencing similar symptoms to seek timely medical attention. He further explained that sharing health details with the public worked out in Charles's favor. He added he was lauded for doing so with commentators saying he had ushered in a new era of transparency in matters of health and the royal family. There was a significant increase in searches related to a large prostate um, And so, I mean, I think it was a good thing. I think a lot of people were um, happy with the fact that he was so honest and open about his uh, diagnosis. And I think that he did a, he did a good thing. But yes, it's always a fine line because the royal family doesn't really disclose too much about their health. Um, So it's, you know, a fine line. Yeah, and I think Queen Camilla knows from so many years of sort of really difficult relationship with the press and with the people mm-hmm. that these sort this big news could really go either way. Are people going to be hugely sympathetic or is it going to turn into, you know, a butt of a joke? And so I can sort mm-hmm. of understand her cautiousness and saying maybe we don't give them lots of updates perhaps we just keep this very you know as as cryptic as we can but we've actually learned that king charles's openness has really benefited him and actually i think made a lot of people feel almost closer and more relatable to the Mm -hmm. king whereas we saw how the princess of wales being very very private about her diagnosis which at the end of the day, it is their right and their decision a decision what to choose. But we've seen how these two different scenarios have played out very, very differently. Yes. No, I totally agree with you because, you know, then, you know, when Kate didn't talk about her health, those wild conspiracies happened and things like that and just spread like wildfire. So he kind of had it under control at the beginning. We talked about it. You know, we didn't move on, but in, yeah. when it became you know, as opposed to the headlines and things like that, it remained under control. So like you said, it's not of our business at the end of the day, how they want to do it, but you know, they sometimes have yeah. the opportunity to kind of set things straight. Exactly. Exactly. Definitely. All right. Well, this was a fun story. So Kate Blanchett is opening up about her lunch with Queen Elizabeth appearing on watch what happens live with Andy Cohen on August 7th. The actress revealed that she once ate lunch with Queen Elizabeth at Buckingham palace but somehow wound up being asked if she could repair Prince Philip's DVD player. Asked why she was invited, she replied, I do not know. The head of the fire brigade was there and Helen Fielding, not the novelist, the scientist was there. I thought maybe because I played her ancestor, Queen Elizabeth the first, but I mean, Prince Philip just asked if I could help him with his DVD player because I was an actress. <laughs> um, and he asked if, she, if um, she helped him. She said, no, I did not. I'm not technical. I love that she went to lunch with the queen and had no idea why she was there. (laughs) I love that. I can't believe she didn't take the, even if I wasn't tech savvy, I would lie just to be taken through like the, you know, make friends with Prince Philip. I can't opportunity really missed there. Um, It's so funny. But yes, I, this is such a nice story. I'm sure she was there because she's an incredible actress, an award-winning actress, and really admired in her field. I love that she sort of downplayed her incredible career and was like, I don't know why I was there. <laughs> but yes, it's amazing how many diverse figures are invited to these lunches and sort of get these opportunities to meet the royals. And it is usually a celebration of their achievements. Uh, but I like that Kate Blanchett was just like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea why I'm here, but uh, I'm here and I can't fix your DVD player. Um, (laughs) There's been a lot of talk going on about Meghan Markle's American Riviera Orchard, but it it is on track to launch uh, later this year. So she first unveiled plans for the lifestyle brand with a website and an Instagram account back in March. And People Magazine is now reporting that the venture is officially set to launch later this year. The clarification comes after the Daily Mail claimed that American Riviera Orchard had a trademark setback regarding irregularities that had to be corrected. They allege that the U.S. Patents and Trademarks Office flagged issues, including incorrect classifications of yoga blankets, picnic baskets, and recipe books. But People Magazine is now reporting that that's that's kind of normal, that they oftentimes receive a notice of irregularities. So things are on track. Um, It's set to go later on this year. But yeah, I feel like we've been talking about this for a really long time and all we've really seen is jam. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, complete. Yeah, we really this is, you know, we're seeing lots of things at play here. First of all, the incredible microscope that anything Harry and Meghan yeah. do 
that comes up because as they said this is this is normal these are just clarifications these things pop up but because it's harry and megan it's turned into this sort of scandalous like oh they've done something wrong when actually that's not the case it's just paperwork and, and bureaucracy mm-hmm. but again you know announcing these projects uh without the pro- without ever having any sort of rollout or with you know too much time in between announcements and i think i've said what i suspect happens is that someone has scooped the story and rather than mm-hmm. letting some tabloid scoop them they try to release the information th- themselves but then you get into yeah. this waiting game of people sitting around saying okay well when and it's been a while and we haven't seen mm-hmm. anything and nothing's happening and that ends up i think reflecting poorly on them in the long run yeah, definitely. They feel like no matter what they do, they're not going to be able to win. Yeah, it's such yeah, a lose that's, lose. Absolutely. That's really the, the key issue. Totally. All right. Well, let's have some fun, fun and break down the royal rules. And this week, we are catching up with Susan Kelly, who runs What Kate Wore, to catch up on our favorite royal summer moments and how the royal children's fashion has evolved. Take a look. I know it, we haven't seen a ton of the royals this summer, but there have been some fun fashion moments. Uh, have there been any that have uh, stood out to you? You know, I think obviously the big ones would have to be seeing Kate at Wimbledon and at Trooping the Color. I think, you know, because people haven't seen her in so long, let alone, you know, all dressed up with a pretty dress on and jewelry and whatnot. And I think those just really resonate with people because of that great length of time that we've been through without seeing her. We, we have seen, despite not seeing the Princess of Wales very much, we have seen the children, Prince George, Prince Louis and Princess Charlotte, um, uh, several times this summer. What do you make of how their uh, royal wardrobe is sort of shaping up to be? Well, you know, we're, we're getting a little more of a mix now. You know, we see continue to see them in pieces from Trotters and Ralph Lauren and other high street brands, if you will. But we're seeing a little branching out, you know, with Charlotte, for example, wearing Cirillus, a really pretty dress. Um, And then you had George and Charlotte at the Taylor Swift concert. Mm -hmm. And Charlotte was in a pretty sequin and sparkly dress from John Lewis. And George was in, you know, your basic Ralph Lauren polo shirt, much like his father's been seen wearing. So I think, you know, you have that element. But then when they're at more official events, like Trooping the Color, you see the boys in double-breasted blazers, navy blazers, like their father will wear, and you see Charlotte, you know, in a little more sophisticated dress, a little more detail, a little higher end, and I think we'll continue to see that, you know, they're, they're growing up right in front of us, and while I think Kate will always stick to a lot of the British high street brands and heritage brands, I think we'll see them continue to expand that selection a little bit. You know, you said that the the Princess of Wales really underwent a subtle style evolution when she became the Princess of Wales. And we really look we're really hoping that she feels well enough soon to return to work or whenever she's ready. What do you think we will see moving forward in her style? Will this period of um recovery have changed her outlook or do you think she's going to be back to that prince and and in that what was the sort of um evolution into this princess of wales style well i think it it was growing the wardrobe at an elevated level uh continuing to work with those designers with whom she's most comfortable and that makes a lot of sense understandably um, lots of Catherine Walker and Jenny Packham and Air Dem and other brands that we've seen her wear over the years. You know, they're the backbone, if you will, of her working wardrobe. Um, but we do see a few other brands working their way, way in. And I think she's more comfortable taking risks now. You know, you, you could see it at the coronation. The, the mandate was no tiaras. And then she wore, as we called it, the non-tiara tiara. The, the headpiece that was made to go with her dress and, and Princess Charlotte wore a mini version of that. You know, so she's staying within the guidelines and the expectations, but she's doing those things to make the look her unique look. Um, I'm not sure where we'll go in terms of, you know, will Sarah Burton land at another high-end label and will the princess follow her there? My expectation, depending on the label, of course, is that she probably will. But she did continue to wear Alexander McQueen, you know, throughout the last year since Sarah Burton announced her departure from the label. So 
I think we'll continue to see McQueen. I think we'll continue to see the color blocked, the tailored separates in suits, trouser suits, skirt suits. Um, and I think we'll continue to see her really go for it on the formal formal wear front. Um, you know, that's where she really gets people's attention and those photos are splashed everywhere, uh, understandably so, because she, you know, she can do the elegant um, look so perfectly and she's grown into a place where she's clearly comfortable doing that. All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Royally Us. Christine, thank you so much, as always. This was fun. It was nice to have a Will and Kate sighting this, this time of summer. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So they're few and far between when we come into, those August, into that August month. So uh, we will keep our, our eyes peeled for some more. But in the meantime, keep commenting and keep subscribing. We'll see you next week.